Well, I got that, caught that badly. Well. I got caught badly by saying yes too many times. Yeah. I got burnt and I won't get burnt again. And I got burnt so badly that I'd said yes to a rugby corporate, right? Listen to this. Uh, it was in a big hotel with a load of people and I said yes to it about six months before that. Then something else came up in the meantime <gasps> and it was like, say, for example, Hector, 24th of April, are you free to do that for that rugby thing? Yeah. And it's a corporate, there'll be mostly pharmaceutical clients. Yeah, but it's a rugby game and then there's 300 in the room. It's in the Aviva, blah, 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 blah. You'll do that. And I said, yeah. And that was like the 24th of April. And I say, it's, this is October. No, no, hang on, before you go on, when do you say how much? And oh, that's all done there. That, and then. That's all. The, yeah, that would be done through the agent and all that. Okay. Yeah. That so, so ninety nine percent of the stuff goes through the agent. So the one percent slips in. So the event and the amount are linked. Yes. Okay. But no. Say, so say say you get a phone call in October for something in April. You think it's like that in so a hundred years away. time? Yes. Oh, the twenty fourth of April, Hector. Done. I just say that as well. Yes, because it's so far away. So what happened in the meeting? I was doing the breakfast radio show. We Ireland were playing Estonia in in a European playoff qualification match oh, yeah. in April. This is April coming up. Yes. This is that was October when I said yes. So about the start of April, we get the phone call that three want to fly the breakfast show out to Estonia for oh. two days to do the breakfast show because we're qualifying for the Euros in Poland, Poznan. And then I'm going, oh yeah, great. When is the? Oh, so uh, obviously. It's the 24th of April, Hector, we're flying out the 23rd and 24th. Yes. And then I went, ding dong. What? The 24th of April? I can't go. What do you mean you can't go? Oh, okay, leave it with me. So then the shit hit the fan. Then I had to cancel that thing. And then it was all sort of, I had to get somebody else to do that gig for me while I was over in Estonia. I have a question. Irish I have a question yes. now. So you... Uh, there's a technical word for this, isn't it? It's like you sublet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sublet. Yeah, like like instruction. Yeah, I sublet it out to yeah, another man. The gig. Can I ask you a question now, Hector? If you don't mind me, it's just been straight up. Yes. This. Did you ask for a slice of the subletting? No, no. Oh, you know, you did. No, I didn't. I gave everything to him. Oh, that's 100%. Sound out. Very sound sound. out. Uh, 100%. And I was grateful for the show. Oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, but it was funny while we were out there uh, on the gig for three and we were doing the breakfast show from Estonia because it wasn't the man who was in charge of the FAI at the time, very flahulok. And we finished the second breakfast show at nine, ten o'clock in the morning, their time. At half ten, I was in an Irish bar, downtown Tallinn. <laughs> and I, by eleven o'clock, I had about four pints of strong Lithuanian or Lithuanian Estonian beer. beer. Estonian beer. And by about 12 o'clock, I had about seven points. And then a load of lads from Nav and Cosmos walked in with the tricolours over them. And by two o'clock in the afternoon, I was getting awful mouldy. <laughs> then the boss of the FAI walks in and he goes, well, and we're, well, hey. and there was a few shorts. And then he goes, do you want to come out with me now? I have a cocktail reception on the top floor of a very big hotel. In your steamboats. <laughs> Me and another and man called Alan, the, the producer, were absolutely gee-eyed. And next minute, we're in the back of a chauffeur-driven fleet of cars heading to a top floor of a very well-known branded hotel. Oh, yes. We go into the lift with the said gentleman and a load of other representatives. <laughs> and I am seeing double. I am <laughs> oh, legless. God, I we get, this is only four o'clock and Ireland are playing at eight. And we get to the top floor of the hotel and it's like walking out into Ibiza. There's a, a pool. It's all multicoloured lights. There's smoke machines. And there's it's a free cocktail bar for all the friends of the said football association and colleagues yes. and entourage and three and everything. All done in the best possible oh. taste. <laughs> and let's just say no expense was spared. I had a whiskey sour in my hand within four minutes and I was standing beside the oh, smoke Jesus. machine with a DJ. <laughs> there was a DJ playing and Alan is looking out over the side the whole of the city and I'm just going, going Alan, where did it all go wrong? We are out of it. <laughs> About nine pints of lager in on board oh. this stage and then a couple of rapid cocktails and <laughs> then we were then it's uh, everybody ready at seven lads seven so at seven then we were taken whisked away in another fleet of BMW 7 BMW 730s to the match <laughs> 
I got into the stadium and there's like only about 8,000 people. It's a tiny little stadium. It's like going to Terryland Park. I couldn't even see the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Bursting for the toilet every five minutes. I've I'm, got I'm, 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 I'm a, a plastic glass in my hand, more beer. Ah. Then I start getting the hangover. Then the, the headache comes in. But the beauty of the whole thing was during that conversation with the said head of the, F- F- of the FAI, he said, how are you getting home? I says, we're flying home tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Is that your... Oh, geez, you're very late. You, do you want to fly home with the boys? I says, what? He says, do you want to fly home with the lads on the team? Tonight, if you want to get out of here. <laughs> so... So I flew home with the Irish team and I was out of my mind <laughs> down oh, the back God. of the plane. I was sitting in the, in the in the airport and all the lads were over having to crack Kevin Doyle, all the boys, and then my hangover was kicking in and I had no salpidine and I am in ribbons. And then on the plane, they all started drinking a few beers and the crack and I was trying to fall asleep and they were shouting, they were pushing me, there were people singing. And I was no, I was no crack Hector down the back. I was like, oh, really bad now because I was drinking since 10 o'clock in the morning. I was an utter fucking wreck. And I was on the team plane coming home, but I, I did a bad thing. I left Alan Swan. <laughs> you left him where? I, I had to tell him that I wasn't flying home with Alan. I'm not flying home with you tomorrow night. Oh, it, oh, you were, were, you dropped them. Oh, <laughs> you fucker, you, you fucker. I well, thought you brought them all with you. Oh, no, oh, it wasn't, I, it wasn't it was with just the, one seat. Would the two of you like to come home? Yeah, it was just me and I, I, I did a bad thing. I flew home with the Irish and team. what did Alan say? <laughs> Alan just woke up in the Holiday Inn and Alan on his own. <laughs> And he had the whole day <laughs> oh, sitting geez. watching Estonian television. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> I'm back in me I'm, I'm back in me bed in Galway. <laughs> Why did nobody ask you when you arrived in Dublin? Where's Alan? <laughs> yeah, but that was one of the perks of the job. But it was an, but from from doing a breakfast show in one of the local radio stations. An hour later, I was in an Irish pub and the crack. And you know those early pints. I know you like your early pints. If you get pints in before 12 o'clock and then four o'clock that afternoon, we were in the back of a car, a cavalcade, heading towards a massive hotel, the Radisson, to a fucking party on the top floor. It was... Outrageous. <laughs> oh, outrageous. Outra- those <laughs> those were the days. And were you, when you, when the, the when your man said you're going to come home with the players, <laughs> did you say, ah, wah, wah, ah. I knew I, my hangover was kicking in and okay. I knew that I could either fly out that night at 10 o'clock or half 10 or wait till about 8 o'clock the following evening. And when I, I was in the horrors, yeah. I said, yeah, I'll yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> and do you, how did you break it to Alan? Ah, uh, he, he never, I don't know if he's ever forgiven me, but uh, it was one of those great trips. But that was a great trip. But I had said yes on the 24th of April to another gig. Luckily enough, I got somebody to, a well-known sports commentator who does rugby on RTE filled in for me. <laughs> um.